Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about properties of functions, and uh, thank you for your patience and working with me this week in the Math 150. Uh, we're looking at even functions to start with, and an even function is a function that has symmetry around the y-axis. So, for instance, one of the even functions you're probably all familiar with is the parabola x squared. If you graph this particular shape, what you're going to find out is on the left side of the y-axis, it's having the same shape as on the right side of the y-axis. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what's causing that. So we're going to use a little bit of mathematical notation here. We're going to try to break this down. Basically what we're saying is if we pick any value to the right side, and it can be any value, you know, it doesn't have to be a specific number. So since I'm keeping it general, I'm just going to call this x, okay? So you choose any value on that side. What you're going to do is you're going to plug it into the function, use that as the input, and when I say plug it in, Remember, we're going to talk about some things here. We're talking into about plugging into a function, so we're going to have f of something. So the value that we're plugging in is x. Well, that gets you the output, which we're going to label as f of x. Now, that doesn't seem all that exciting right now, because basically all we're saying is we've got a point right here called x f of x. And again, I'm, I'm using x to keep this really general. I, I could have used any number, and maybe I'll show you an example of that in a second just to show you, but I want to start off with a general case. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if it's symmetrical on the other side of the y-axis, we're going to go that exact same distance, okay? So we're going to take it out that exact same distance, but this time, oops, this time it's going to be not x, it's actually going to be negative x because we're going out the same distance but to the left. So this time when we plug in, we're going to write f of something, but we're going to plug it in. Now, normally what we'd say is we would write f of negative x there. But what you're going to find out is that lines up exactly with the first f of x we got. So even though this point right here is x, f of negative x, it's actually got the same y value as our first point. So what we're showing is these two y values are equal. Because of that, we have a definition for an even function. A function is an even function if f of negative x is equal to f of x. So that is what you want to know about even functions right here. Okay, this is the, the, the take home information that you need. Even functions are going to be symmetrical around the y axis every time when you plug in a negative value and you plug in a positive value, you get the same answer. Okay, so let's take a look at what an odd function would be now, okay? So if you're talking about an odd function, an odd function is a function that's symmetrical to the origin. So this time, instead of flipping over the y-axis, you're actually going to reflect right through the origin. So what that means is the following. Let me, draw, let me draw a function that's got the property of being an odd function, okay? It's going to have a shape in this side, and then it's going to have the same shape, but really what it's kind of like, it's kind of like flipping it over the y-axis, but then flipping it over the x-axis. And if you do that, you're going to get a shape that looks like this, okay? It's kind of like this double flip, or some people say it rotates around the origin. I like the double flip. I say, think of it as flipping over the, the y-axis, then flipping it over the x-axis. Now, algebraically, what does that mean? Well, if we look at the points again, and again, I'm just going to keep this general. If I plug in a value over here, and I plug in that x value, and I get out that y value, and I'm going to have f of something plug in x, and I'm going to end up with the point x comma f of x again. You know, not really all that surprising. But now when I go to the symmetrical input and call that one negative x, well, this time I'm not going up. This time I'm going down, and I'm going over this way. And that means I'm plugging in negative x, and that means this is going to be f of negative x. Now, what's interesting about these is f of x and f of negative x, in other words, the two y values, they're not the same y value, but they are the same distance from the origin. So what that means is I've got f of x not equal to f of negative x. Okay, that's not true. But if I make one slight change, if I say f of negative x is equal to f of x, and I put a negative in front of the f of x, that will reflect it over, and then they will be the same. So again, you know, a lot of notation here. Let's look at this kind of in another light. Let's look at this by saying, let's use the real function so you can kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to give this to you again, but this time 
<clears throat> I'm actually going to give you the actual function value. So the example we were using was x squared. Okay, so here's x squared. If I do f of x equals x squared, and I pick any value, it doesn't matter what value. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to pick 3. When I plug that in, f of something equals something squared, I'm plugging in the 3, and that's giving me out 9. So in this graph, what that means is I bet the value 3, 9 for that point right there. So now I want to see how it reacts on the other side. So I go to the symmetrical value on the x-axis. I go to that negative 3. Okay, so I'm going over here to negative 3. I'm plugging it in. When I plug that in, I'm going to do my something squared. I'm going to do negative 3, and I'm going to get 9 again. And that's what we're saying. We're saying that if I do a positive value input and I do a negative value input, I will get the same output. There is that definition of even. Now, I did it for three. I could just as easily done it for any value. For a function to be even, it can't work for just one. It has to work for every value. And that's why it's important that we use the general case of negative x, an x, okay? Odd would be the same thing. Uh, an example of an odd function, f of x equals x cubed is an example of an odd function. Again, I'm just going to pick a value here. Let's say I plug in 5 in this case. Well, in this case, f of something equals something cubed. If I plug in 5, I'm going to get 125. If I do the same thing with its mirror image, if I plug in negative 5, I'm going to get something cubed. Put it in negative 5, I'm going to get negative 125. And what we see is that the outputs are not the same they differ by a negative factor. So what we're saying is that f of negative five, that answer, would be the same as f of five if I put a negative in front of the result. So again, I'm saying negative 125 is the same as 125 as long as I remember to put a negative in the front. This works for one value. To be working for odd functions, it has to work for every single value. So what I wanna do is take you through an example now. So let's add a page. And let's look at this. What if we have the following function? What if we're asked, is f of x equal to um, 3x raised to the fourth plus 2 over x squared minus 1, even or odd? Is this even, odd, or neither? Okay, because most functions actually are neither. If you're neither, you have no symmetry. Even functions have a certain symmetry over the y-axis, odd through the origin. So now, the way you do this, if you see these words, even or odd, okay, anytime you see these words, okay, what you want to do is you want to plug in negative x and see what happens, okay? Every single time you see even odd. So when I say plug in, we use something. So you may remember from our last class where we were together uh, online, I like to use these parentheses as placeholders for my inputs. I call them somethings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this function ready to be plugged into. And now I'm going to plug in negative x. The idea is this. The even function says if you do f of negative x, you'll get f of x. And if you do f of negative x for an odd function, you'll get negative f of x. Both of them have plug in f of x in common. I'm sorry, plug in f of negative x. So that's where we start. If when we're done, we return back to this original function, then we're going to know we're even. If we return to this original function, but there's a negative outside, we're going to be odd. If we get neither, the function's neither. So <clears throat> here we go. We're going to plug in negative x. I'm plugging in negative x here and negative x here. So what's going to happen? Well, again, this is still f of negative x. But now what's going to happen is I'm going to take this negative x and raise it to the fourth power. Well, when I raise a negative to the fourth power, the negative becomes positive. Every time I have an even number of factors, I'm going to lose that negative. So that's really going to simplify to just 3x to the fourth. There's nothing going on with this positive 2, so he just gets dragged along as positive 2. And now on the bottom, I've got a situation where I've got a negative x again, but it's being squared. Again, even number of factors. <clears throat> That's going to behave the same as x squared. And then for this guy, this negative 1, he just gets copied along as a negative 1. <clears throat> so now I've taken f of negative x and I've simplified it. 
the question is, how does it look when I compare it back to the original problem? Well, the original problem is right here. Here's my original problem. So I'm just gonna take that, I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm gonna compare it to the one I just got. And I'm asking, are they the same? If they're the same, I've got an even function. If they're the same, but <coughs> they have a negative factor, it's an odd function. And everything else, we just write neither. So as we're looking at this, we clearly see these are the exact same thing. What that means is when I did f of negative x, I got the same as doing f of x, therefore this function is even. Okay, this function is even. And that's how you would prove it. You just go back. I, I would like it if you guys at the very end, you went back after doing your work and you just said, oh look, I got f of x again. So therefore I've got an even function. So what that means is if I plug in 10 into this function, and I plug in negative 10, I'll get the same answer. If I plug in three and negative three, I'll get the same answer. These mirror inputs are always gonna give us the same value, and that's gonna create symmetry over the y-axis. We're gonna do one more example here before we end this really short video. Uh, there will be a series of videos coming today, one for each topic, so I'm just doing a bunch of short ones for you guys. So let me add a page here, and then let's just look at this one. What happens when I've got f of x equals x cubed, minus three X um, all over X to the 10th plus X to the fourth plus three, okay? So again, is this even, odd, or neither? Anytime you see even and odd, it means plug in negative x and see what happens, okay? So we're gonna start with this one, we're gonna plug in negative x. So I'm gonna set this up, I'm gonna go f of something equals something cubed minus three times something all over something to the 10th plus something to the fourth plus three. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna plug in this negative x. If I return to the original example, this will be even. If I return to the original example with a negative factor, this function will be odd. Anything else, this function will be neither. So let's look at this one. In this case, I'm taking a negative x and I'm cubing it again. So just to make this clear in case I wasn't clear last time, that's like saying negative x times negative x times negative x. Three factors of a negative give me a negative answer, and then x times x times x is x cubed. So we're gonna to to simplify that to negative x cubed without the parentheses, okay? When I do the next one, I've got negative three times negative x. Well, negative times negative is positive, so it's gonna give me positive three x. Now on the bottom, you're gonna see something like what just happened in the last example. We've got a bunch of negative x's raised to even exponents. All of those are just gonna lose their negative. It's gonna become x to the 10th, then it's gonna become x to the fourth, then it's gonna become three. So the idea, again, is to compare this to the original function. So do these look exactly the same? Well, the denominators are a dead-on match, so that's good. But the numerators are off, and the reason they're off is because of the signs. So now I say to myself, hey, if I just changed the signs of the numerator, I would have it. Well, mathematically, there is a way to do that. If you want to change all the signs, you factor out a negative 1. So in that numerator, I am now factoring out a negative 1, and that's gonna change the signs of the numerator. Now notice, I'm only working in the numerator here. This doesn't affect the denominator in any way, shape, or form, so the denominator just gets copied over. If I want to now, I can now say that when I have a fraction, and that fraction is negative, just a little side note here. If I wanted negative one-half, I can write negative one-half in several different ways. One way I can write negative one-half is the negative one divided by two. That's the same as having a negative in the bottom as well, so I can actually have positive one over negative two. I could choose to write the negative out in front of the entire fraction kind of in the middle, and that's the same. And that's also the same as writing a negative with a one half in parentheses. These are all the same thing. So I've got a negative in my numerator. What I'd like to do is instead of writing it with a negative in the numerator like I have in this expression, I'd like to pull it out in the front and use those parentheses. So I'm gonna apply that in my problem up above. I'm gonna write that negative out in the front with parentheses, and I'm gonna get x cubed minus three x on top. I'm gonna to x to the 10th plus x to the fourth plus three on the bottom. And what this means to me now is I now see I have got that original function back 
but there's a negative in front of it. So what I have shown now is f of negative x is equal to the negative version of f of x. And this function is odd. This function is odd. So I'd like to give you guys a chance to work on some examples. Um, I'm going to post this video, and then I'll post the examples a little later on today. There will be, I think, three more videos coming today, very short. I'm going to try to keep them all in 10 minutes so you can focus on one topic at a time. Uh, but I'll be coming back and see you guys later today. Okay? Have a great day. Thanks, everybody.